Between the years of 1957 and 1984, I became a pawn in the government scheme whose ultimate goal was mind control and to create the perfect spy, all for the use of chemicals, radiation, drugs, hypnosis, electric shock, isolation in tubs of water, sleep deprivation, brainwashing, verbal, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. I was exploited unwittingly for nearly three decades of my life, and the only explanations given to me were that, quote, the end justifies the means, and, quote, I was serving my country in their bold effort to fight communism. I can only summarize my circumstances by saying they took an already abused seven-year-old child and compounded my suffering beyond belief. The saddest part is I know for a fact that I was not alone. There were countless other children in my same situation, and there was no one to help us until now. I've already submitted as much information as possible, including conversations uh, overheard of the people, agencies responsible, I'm able to report all this to you in such detail because of my photographic memory and the arrogance of the doctors, the arrogance of the people involved. They were certain they would always control my mind. Although the process of recalling these atrocities is not an easy one, nor is it without some danger to myself and my family, I feel the risk is worth taking. Dr. L. Wilson Green, who claimed to have received $50 million from the Edgewood Chemical and Radiology Laboratory, as part of the t TSD, or Technical Science Division, of the CIA, once described to Dr. Charles Brown that, quote, children were used as subjects because they were more fun to work with and cheaper, too. They needed lower profile subjects than soldiers or government people, so only young, willing females would do. Besides, he said, I like scaring them. They in the agency think I'm a god, creating subjects and experiments for whatever deviant purposes Sid and James can think up, Sid being Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, James, Dr. James Hamilton. In 1958, I was to be tested, they told me, by some important doctors by, from the society, or the Human Ecology Society, and I was instructed to cooperate. I was told not to look at anyone's faces and not try hard not to ignore, to try hard not to ignore any names, as this was a very secret project. But I was told to be brave and all these things would help me forget. Naturally, as most children do, I did the opposite and remembered as much as I could. Uh, Dr. John Gittinger tested me, Dr. Cameron gave me the shocks, and Dr. Green the x-rays. Then I was told by Sid Gottlieb that, quote, I was right for the big A, or meaning artichoke. By the time I left to go home, just like every time from then on, I would remember only whatever explanations Dr. Robert G. Heath at Tulane Medical University gave me for the odd bruises, needle marks, burns on my head, fingers, and even the genital soreness. I had no reason to believe otherwise. They had already begun to control my mind. The next year, I was sent to a lodge in Maryland called Deep Creek Cabins to learn how to sexually please men. I was taught how to coerce them into talking about themselves, and it was, doc it was uh, Richard Helms, who was Deputy D Director of the CIA, Dr. Gottlieb, uh, Captain George White, Morris Allen, who all planned on filming as many high government agency officials and heads of academic institutions and foundations as possible, so that later when the fun funding for mind control and radiation started to dwindle, the projects would continue. I was used to entrap many unwitting men, including themselves, all with the use of a hidden camera. I was only nine years old when this sexual humiliation began. I overheard conversations about a part of the agency called ORD, which I found out was Office of Research and Development. It was run by Dr. Green, Dr. Stephen Aldrich, Martin Orne, and Morris Allen. Once a crude remark was made by Dr. Gottlieb about a certain possible leak over New Orleans East involving a large group of retarded children who are being given massive doses of radiation. He asked, why was Wilson so worried about a few retarded kids? After all, they would be the least likely to spill the beans. Another time, I heard Dr. Martin Orne, who was the director then of the scientific office and later the head of the Institute for Experimental Research, state that, quote, in order to keep more funding coming from different sources for radiation, 
and mind control projects, he suggested stepping up the amounts of stressors used and also the blackmail portion of the experiments. He said it needed to be done faster than to get rid of the subjects or they were asking for us to come back later and haunt them with our rem remembrances. There's much more I could tell you about government-sponsored research, including project names, sub-project numbers, people involved, facilities used, tests, and other forms of pain induction. But I think I've given more than enough information to recommend further investigation of all the mind control projects, especially as they involve so much use of the radiation. I would love nothing more than to say that I dreamed all this up and need just to forget it. But that would be a tragic mistake. It would also be a lie. All these atrocities did occur to me and to countless other children, and all under the guise of defending our country. It is because of the cumulative effects of exposure to radiation, chemicals, drugs, pain, and subsequent mental and physical distress that I've been robbed of the ability to work and even to bear any children of my own. It is blatantly obvious that none of this was needed, nor should it ever have been allowed to take place at all. And the only means we have to seek out the awful truth and bring it to light is by opening whatever files remain on all the projects and through another presidential commission on mind control. I believe that every citizen of this nation has the right to know just what is fact and what is fiction. It is our greatest protection against the possibility of this ever happening again. In conclusion, I can offer you no more than what I've given you today, the truth. And I thank you for your time.